Text has become much clearer. The structure has become clearer. Um, in the second version, there was still left uh, much left over from all the various battles that we had on various topics within the Commission and with various lobby groups. Most of that had gone out, and as such, the document is much easier to read. But of course, I have a few remarks to make, otherwise I wouldn't be speaking, um, so let's make it. The first, I already mentioned it, is the strange status of the EIF. It's a communication. It doesn't bind anybody, not even the Commission services. And if not, things have enormously changed since I left the Commission. The Commission services don't feel bound by it. Margarita say it's transposed into the national interoperability framework. Well, when you have a, well, the IF or two things. One, it's a common vocabulary. And I can very well accept that this has been transposed and that all this NIFS speaks in more or less the same vocabulary. But second, it's a long list of recommendations. And I doubt very much that repeating, well, what is transposing recommendations in a member state, having another long list of recommendations at the national level, what, what does that mean? What is the power? Why not having more ambition? Why haven't the Commission gone for something like a ministerial declaration? Like we have one in Malmo on e-government. It should have been some kind of a joint commitment from member states and the institutions to do something. Why not do something like next week there is in Amsterdam the signing of the joint initiative on standardization where all stakeholders in, uh, in standardization declare solemnly that they will work together to improve things. This is, remains for the moment a document on the website. That is my first comment. Is it the most efficient method? And should it really be, should the Commission not? I always, I continue to speak we, if I mean the Commission. They're still paying my pension. Um, so, uh, should the Commission not be more uh, uh, ambitious? Second, and something that annoys me a lot, of course, is that in this revision of the IF, openness is reduced to transparency. When we speak about open standards, when we speak about open internet, when we speak about open access to research, is that what we speak about? Is it only transparency? Where is the freedom of choice? Where is the competition? Where is the idea that openness leads to flexibility? Where is the idea that openness leads to sustainability? It's all gone. Openness just has become transparency. Where is the idea that openness leads to community building, to collaboration, not only between administrations, but between administrations, solution providers, citizens and civil society? I must admit that in the e-government plan, at least they added open gov uh, government to the thing about openness is transparency. So they've done a little bit better there. But this is very disappointing. Second, there is the subtle balance between sharing reuse, collaborate. If we all use the same tools, then of course we're interoperable. But that was not the purpose of the game. So while, yes, developing building blocks certainly is a good thing. And while, yes, 
developing building blocks, implementing standards, made, I would say, replaces paper standards by code, which is also certainly a good thing. I miss the collaboration. I miss big projects of the nature like Linux itself, where the biggest companies of the earth, together with many individuals, all work together to build the ultimate operating system. Or I miss something, a project like LibreOffice, that when it was open office, has a limited life in a limited <coughs> community because it was enshrined in a single company that decided all to do with it. And when it came open and became legal office, now it has many more collaboration. I miss something like OpenStack. And when building blocks are developed, uh, are made available as open source, they're not open source projects. They're what I call fake open source. It's something like Alfresco. Yes, it's licensed under an open source license, but it's not a community project. It's something to someone who develops, and if you can use it, you're allowed to use it. But that's it. Don't bother anymore. There is no real collaboration. And that, I must admit, was already in my time one of the failures of the program. We couldn't really launch real collaboration between administrations. The next talk that probably will be developed further by Nikki is about the, refer, uh, the relevance of the uh, European interoperability framework in a cloud dominated future. Is the underlying model still valid? How do we ensure application portability? and information portability in a cloud-dominated world because interoperability gets a new meaning there. And finally, one of my, one of my other uh, dadas, the definition of open standards. Why does the comp uh, Commission continue to struggle with that? We have seen in the revision of the EIF text, we see the definition that was there in the first revision, the one which say that front is enough, although it also said it must be implementable in open source. We have seen in the recent documents about standardization, similar wording, although we have heard Oettinger speak in favour of real open standards in various of his speeches. And finally, recently, the Commission has said that royalty free is also a form of fraud, and that royalty free, hence, is compatible with open source, something that is discussed by many as not being the case. So there are a few talks on some topics where I think that the EIF should have more ambition and should be used more actively to change things.